Hey Bonnie, um, back finally from the boat. Uh, it was wonderful, but we ended up coming back, um, I guess, Thursday night uh, because of small craft advisory, so best not be on the boat during high winds overnight. <laughs> anyway, um, nice series again. Um, let's take a look together. I love the fact that you're annotating your pictures with what you were thinking and what you did to edit um, and what you like about it. Um, so that's great. Uh, Lily is a wonderful form and um, <clears throat> one, one thing I'm noticing, it's nice that you're shooting with a DSLR. I think it's a uh, Nikon 3200. Um, unlike a phone, using a, a real camera with a real lens, uh, <laughs> um, I say that with air quotes, uh, and then not to offend people that are shooting with a phone, but um, you get to take advantage of um, nice out of back, out of focus backgrounds, and um, shallow depth of field. Um, that's accentuated with um, uh, the closer you get, and I'll discuss that more in a second. But these are all really nice, and um, I like the way this is hanging this way, and the light on it, and the way it's separating from the background. Um, and you mentioned you even flipped this so that it looks like it's hanging this way, and, and I like that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, favorite photo number one. I kind of agree. I love the um, magenta, uh, the way it separates from this grayish background here. Um, and uh, when we see these circles like this of out of focus, circles of confusion, it's called, I think, um, a new name for it that's cropped up in the last few years is called Boca, B-O-K-E-H. And um, this is actually the shape of the aperture in your lens that's repeated with uh, specular highlights in the background. <clears throat> um, so, yes. I do have one little thing, a very minor. Um, it, partly it could be how the images are displayed on the blog versus how you're seeing them on your home computer. But I felt we could brighten this up just a little bit. So here it is, pasted into Photoshop. And um, the blue hydrangea behind is kind of cool, but I wouldn't want to see that get brighter. And I'm going to brighten up the rest of this a bit. So just grab the lasso and select around here and like that select and mask feather it out until it just starts to you know that's a little bit much like that and then hide it you can um, I guess I always use control H and um, I'm, I was looking to see if there was a menu item for it Control H here, extras, so that was under view. But Control H toggles the selection on and off, and then Control L for our levels. And notice how the highlight uh, triangle here is shy of the edge of the mountain of histogram. So if I bring that in just up to the edge, maybe a touch more, and Control Z to toggle the before and after. Um, that's one step. I'm going to brighten up this side a little more. And let's see. Select and mask, feather it out. And control L. And add more light. There we go. Control D select. Um, and the reason I selected inside the flower and not just gave levels to the whole thing was so I didn't want this bright background to get any brighter. Um, I think this is a bit more expressive to see the yellows glowing a bit more like this. Uh, here's the history shortcut and you can see where it started. Okay, so um, there we go. This one's fine just the way it is. And um, yeah, what's not to love here with these um, uh, individual flower buds in close like this? This is separating nicely too. It's elegant. It's simple. The out of focus background 
allows us to really focus on the foreground. And the narrow depth of field um, uh, is expressive too, as these uh, buds back here go out of focus. <clears throat> so I mentioned this too. Um, so you're doing, oh yeah, you use the word bokeh here. Uh, excellent. Um, so there are three factors that control depth of field or bokeh. One, how close you are to your subject. So the closer you are, the narrower the depth of field, the greater the bokeh. Two, the aperture. The smaller the aperture, meaning towards f16 or f22, instead of using the whole um, opening of the lens, wide open would be, depending on what lens you're using. Uh, if it's the kit lens, that's the typical zoom lens, it's f4.5. Um, uh, one of the first things you can do is you get going in this uh, photography uh, more, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, get more interested in adding to that. I don't know whether you do have other lenses, but the first thing to do is to get a prime lens like a 50 millimeter, f1.4 or an f1.8, and that uh, gives you even sharper results and even more intense bokeh in the background. Um, so um, focal length is the third element that contributes to depth of field uh, shallowness. The wider the lens, the deeper the depth of the field. The more telephoto the lens, the narrower it is. So the maximum um, uh, sort of narrow depth of field would be using a telephoto lens, wide open, very close to your subject. OK? Um, this is good. Um, you could tight maybe just a touch of light in here. Um, I'm so glad you're shooting in raw and getting used to that. This is lovely, simple. Again, the out-of-focus background. For any folks out there that are shooting just with a camera, I mean with a phone, um, this is the biggest reason to to get a real camera. And um, excellent, excellent cameras that are just a couple of years old are on eBay for $100. So um, if you're at all interested, it's a great thing to do. So um, yeah, just selecting um, elements, even from manufactured things. Um, abstracts them in an interesting way. So, um, okay, good. Um, I tend not to use the black and white tool where you have to be very careful. And one of the reasons is, yes, it has all the potential for giving you these custom filters so that, um, uh, let's say you're photographing and there's a blue sky and when you convert it to black and white, you want it, the blue sky to go even darker and you dial this to the left, um, or if, et cetera, you know. Um, so let's say this was a red teapot and you wanted it to be brighter, you can just dial up the red to the right, and it, without having to do a feathered selection, it's just going to brighten up this pot on its own. The problem with this is I've found that it adds a lot of noise uh, in the conversion. So um, working with RAW, now that is the ticket. Um, let's see if I can get this bigger here. Um, yeah, it's too big, so let me hit escape. Um, uh, we have controls in here. Oh yeah, Nikon 3200 for exposure, for color balance. This is like having your negative in a dark room. Um, you have ultimate control over how things uh, appear. Um, you have control over exposure, the highlights and the blacks and so on. So that's great. Um, good. See you on the next one.